So a lot of times when you go into the studio, it's hard to get started, especially now when so much is going on in the world. So I thought I would make a little video showing you guys a little bit of my sketchbook practice. So sometimes when I come into the studio, the first thing I like to do is just go through my sketchbook and maybe work out some little painting problems I'm having or put down some thoughts or whatever, sometimes just goof around. So I'll show you this one. This is a pretty big sketchbook um, that's made by Moschina. And this is watercolor paper. So a lot of times I'll actually put this sketchbook up where I'm airbrushing and I'll work out problems in a bigger painting here in my sketchbook. So these are some balloons I was working on with the airbrush. I'm sorry, some of these are sideways because this is kind of the format of the sketchbook and I turn it all the time. This was a little gouache version where I was just playing with how to render in gouache using a hashing technique and then seeing how well a graphic element looked on top. And I was testing a stencil here, which I ended up not using. I thought the stencil just kind of didn't work, but that's what a sketchbook's for, right? You can try things out here, see if they work or not. This was another test where I was playing around with uh, different kinds of shields for the airbrush, and then I was also playing with some glazes here. This was for a past body of work. Hmm. I wrote some notes in here. The, world's get, the world gets worse and the art gets tasteful. Yeah, that's true. These are some gouache studies um, of some storm. Actually, there's nothing here. This is just a field. So a lot of times, I actually like to put a, a solid field of gouache down because it lifts up and then I work into it with light paint and uh, work forward. Uh, and that's what I did here with this, which is not finished. Sometimes I just do this to get started. Ooh, this is the zombie uh, from my last show at uh, LSH Collab. Uh, I actually did make a bigger painting of this zombie. It's kind of a pixelated zombie. And then uh, I got some great new airbrushes donated to me for a project I did before the pandemic called CSUN Votes uh, with my students. And so I was testing, I got this Grex airbrush, which I guess is a kind of all purpose hobbyist brush. And you can see here, I'm testing the spray pattern. I'm testing how well it does with a shield, just seeing you know, if it'll work with stent the stencils that we were using for our project. And totally did. It was actually a pretty nice airbrush. Well, this one's white, right way around. This is a study. This is actually a gouache study for a painting that I made of a big, big storm in Texas. And these are more tests. So when you work with an airbrush, uh, you really do have to get a feel for the brush. So whenever I get a new one, I do things like this where I just see how small I can make the line. And here you can see I'm making a note of this is 10 PSI, this is 30 PSI, just to see when is the paint going to stop having a uniform application, like how much air is too much air. And you can see the spidering here is what happens when you have too much air. Uh, most airbrushes come with a guide on what PSI to use with their brush, but I've often found that that's a little bit variable, so I prefer to do my own PSI tests. Is here you can see I'm testing from smallest opening all the way to the largest opening. I think this was the Pashi VSR 90. I don't remember what the other one was. This one you can see I made a note of if viscosity is wrong, spidering occurs. So another kind of tricky thing with airbrushes is you have to get the viscosity, which is the thickness or thinness of the paint, just right uh, for it to go through the gun properly. Oh, these were some little sketches. So this is something fun that I do. I'll kind of draw these little squares or tape off little squares. And when I'm working on an airbrush painting, if I have a little extra paint left in the bowl of the airbrush, I'll just whip out like a tiny little sketch or a little study. I actually really like to sketch. Uh, I sketch in my sketchbook a lot with all media, but it's also really fun to just sketch with the paint. And you know, you always have those little bits of unused paint that you don't want to waste. So it's kind of a cool thing to do. Why this page is blank. These were some little gouache studies. So stuff like this 
these really help get you rolling. So, you know, you don't look at them super seriously. You just sit down and start painting and see which ones work. And I think I actually did make this one. And I think I'm going to make this one. So a lot of times I'll do a little sketch like this with my source images before I ever go to like a larger scale, just to kind of see how it translates into the painted form. So today what I'm going to do really quickly is show you something that I'm working on. So I'm working on this painting right now. And this is a painting of, uh, it's shot through the front windshield of the car while my husband and I were waiting in line to get a COVID test at uh, Dodger Stadium. And it was a three hour line. It was really, really long and just super surreal to be at Dodger Stadium, which is a place we go to typically in the summer to see the Dodgers play. And it's usually a, a site I associate with like fun and eating hot dogs and cheap beer and just being crammed into a place with a lot of people, all of us enjoying the same thing. And of course now we're all crammed into the same place, confined to our cars, not enjoying the moment. So it's, it's a real kind of flip and a weird opposite. So I thought, even though this looks like a lot of my past nocturnes, the, the subject's really different. So I've already started this painting. And when I look at the painting on the wall over there, I can see that I have these two crescents kind of misplaced. So one thing that's really difficult about painting these out of focus paintings is that there is an image here, but you have to learn to see it. So if you look closely, you can see these are tail lights, and that's a license plate, and that's a bumper. So this is the back end of a car, and that's a tail light break, that like window break. These are cones, right? Because they have everybody in lanes. This is another car. That's one brake light. That's the other brake light, which I guess is dimmer. Uh, and here is the bumper. Here's their license plate. Right. So most of these are brake lights. And as they get farther away, they get harder to see. And these are lights receding into the distance. So if these in the painting, it might look purely abstract. But if these aren't lined up properly in the painting, then it's going to look like nonsense. So I thought what I was going to do today before I'm, I go back and finish that painting was I was just going to kind of sketch um, a little bit of this painting. And I just, sometimes I just take out the pan I want to use. So this is my black pan. And I'm going to show you how I do it. So I like to, actually like to tape off my sketches in my sketchbook with some low tack blue tape. If you've taken any of my classes, you know that I'm pretty darn serious about the blue tape. You have to have blue tape. Now, typically, if I was going to be super precise, I would scale this so it would be the exact same proportions as my image. But that's not really what I'm after today, that kind of accuracy. I'm just looking to get this lined up right. So I'm just going to make it about the same size as the actual image. So there, now that's nice and taped off. Sometimes I get a little persnickety. And you can see some of those older ones in here are already, they, I, I leave these taped up off until I have decided that I'm done with it, which could be today, it could be never, who knows. I find that doing things like this, like, keeping kind of a simple geometry or a, a nice clean kind of place to work helps me keep my thoughts organized. You know what they say, always be knowing. So you can sketch with paint. So I've got my image over here in front of me, which you can't see, but doing so I'm just kind of giving myself a little body memory of what this thing really looks like and where everything is placed now I really really believe you know I'm saying that phrase body memory 
I do believe that by doing things over and over again, our body remembers how to do it. So when you're sketching and you're kind of sketching the same thing over and over again, the more you do it, the better you're going to get at it. So that holds true for things like this too. So, you know, a working sketch or a thumbnail sketch, it'll actually help you when you go to the real thing because you've drawn it before. Of course, if you've studied life drawing, you know that this is absolutely true because the body is the body, right? It comes in lots of different shapes and sizes, but the mechanics are the same. And once you start to understand those mechanics, you become pretty adept at drawing the human body. Awesome. Okay, so there's a couple people have asked me about this little tiny brush that I'm using. This is my Da Vinci travel brush, and I know it's silly that I'm using it here in the studio like this, but I love this brush. A friend of mine bought it for me in Paris, and it's just so great for everything that I use it all the time, even though I don't really need to be using this brush. I have lots of full-size brushes. But you'll see, you know, when I was a student, there are all those video, you know, documentaries, not videos, back then they were just films of artists in their studios. And they, like Lucian Freud and stuff, he'd always have this big can of brushes. And I'd always think to myself, someday I'll be a real artist and I'll have a big can of brushes. Then, of course, you become an artist and you realize that you're just going to keep using the same brush every day. Big can of brushes is just for show. Or it's just failed brushes that you tried but can't bring yourself to throw away. Or give away. Or maybe you just want to have that can. I don't know. But I, I like two kinds of paintbrushes. I like expensive sables like this little one and I like the cheapy cheapy super cheapies like those little craft store brushes I use a lot of those when I paint with a brush I mean obviously most of my work I'm not painting with the brush I'm painting with an airbrush so you can see like all I'm doing here is just kind of trying to sketch out some proportions for myself and I can see I'm making this bumper too high. So I'm just gonna go in some white and pull it down a little. Sometimes I'll just work on something like this until I feel like I'm ready to like go work on the big painting I'm working on. So sometimes it's 10 minutes, sometimes I'll get lost in something like this and just do this all day long. That's fine too. It's hard to make art with pre-existing ideas of what you think that art is gonna be. Sometimes you gotta just work and just let the work emerge from the work that you're doing. And it's all work, you know? Like, working in your sketchbook is work. That's, that counts, that's studio time. I think in school sometimes we're a little too focused on the final thing that you're going to bring to the critique or whatever. Sometimes the other stuff that you're doing is actually more interesting than what you bring to crit. Oh, I can see that I'm also something, for some reason I keep wanting to move that license plate up. You know, it's really easy to lose your place in these kind of kooky paintings that I'm making. Like I even lose my place quite a bit. So I just keep working until I get it right. I think this is the error I was making is I was just for some reason wanting to make that license plate a lot higher than what it really was. This crescent is more here. This crescent is more here. Oh, okay, fields, get it together. 
So a cool thing with gouache, you can lift it. So these areas that I want to make lighter, I can take a piece of tissue or I can even just take a dry brush like this. See, I'm just lifting it. So you can just wet it again. That's why I like to lay a ground sometimes because then I just work into it like this. That's a really great way to correct in a gouache painting. See, so there's my original drawings right there. But I have already determined that I had that in the wrong spot, so I'm just going to get rid of it there. This is all red up here. I'm just doing black and white right now. I'm not getting in there with all the color that's actually in this thing. That's fine. You don't have to make everything perfect all the time. So you can see when I started, I kind of road mapped out where everything goes. So then I can just start to work across. So it's like I want to lighten this a little more. See how I can just pull that gouache out? And you can even take a towel and just whoop, do that. So you can kind of put the water on where you want to lift. And then do that. It's like magic, isn't it? I just want to make this lighter. Now I've got some little, these little lights that are being reflected are called bokeh in photography. It's a Japanese word. I don't know exactly what it means, but I just know they're called bokeh. You can make that effect in Photoshop too. You can like make custom bokeh. You know who loves bokeh? Wedding photographers. Holy crap. Maybe people just look prettier with bokeh in the background. I don't know. See, so yeah, I'm just kind of locating them and then A gouache is very forgiving. It's nice to use it in the sketchbook because if you're just kind of meandering into your practice for the day, it's really forgiving and sweet and it just kind of lets you play. I always think of doing stuff like this as like, you know, if you're gonna run or you're gonna do some sort of like hardcore exercise, you like stretch out first. This is kind of like that, but with art will not give you nice abs. Okay, so I'm gonna just lift a little here, and lift a little here, and lift a lot right here. There's another one here. So see, I'm starting to establish, just in a strict drawing sense, what's happening there. And I can see like this needs to all be lighter. You know, I get asked a lot if I project. I don't, I don't project. I used to in old work, like I used to do this more hard edged work and projecting was really useful for that because the work was really precise. This work's not precise. It looks precise, but the nature of it you know, is like this kind of seeking of the image that you've got to do, which I really enjoy, like that finding the image in the work. And so I found that working this way, as opposed to the super precise projection method, to me is just really much more satisfying as an artist. 
I like to hunt for the image and find it. And it's very rewarding when you finally get there. I do not disparage projecting at all, by the way. It's totally fine. Do whatever works for you. This is what works for me. It might not be the same. And that's totally fine. So you can just keep pushing that paint around and moving it. So nice. So nice. I'm realizing my license plate's a little too big, so I'm going to chop some of it off. Okay. I'm looking at my painting up there, and I'm realizing that really the mistake I made was that I've got this license plate in the wrong place. So I think once I locate, get this license plate reset, I'll be able to realign these two tail lights. So that's what I'm going to do. So typical day for me, I work in the sketchbook right up until the point where I've kind of solved my problem. And now I'm going to go back to the painting. So I'll probably come back to this again, right? When I get to another part of the painting where I want to try to clarify things, or maybe sometime if I'm just sitting here and I'm a little too stressed to work on the painting, because let's just face it, attempted coup last week, everybody's on edge. Sometimes it's nice to just sit and do something like this that's really low stakes so that you don't destroy the painting that you're working on, uh, which totally happens all the time too. So sometimes it's nice to just zone out and do something really easy and really uh, kind of low key. And that's what I always think about my sketchbook as. So it's very important, but it's also really low stakes. And sometimes that's the best way to segue back into your regular studio practice.